I just want to thank you for those comments and those additions. And it just shows us, I think it helps illustrate how many challenges fit children are facing. Because I think we could spend another hour or a whole day and a whole week just talking about the levels of difficulties um, in our households, in the churches, in society, in the media. So thank you for all those comments. And uh, it's sad to say that a lot of these issues are certainly problems and challenges that cut across countries and cut across ages and centuries. Uh, the issue of rape uh, and war, uh, I've read the story of Lema Bowie, the woman in Liberia who won the Nobel Peace Prize for her work to work with Muslim women and Christian women who were all tired of seeing their children become soldiers or their girls being raped, and they were able to come together to have a peace movement that helped to end that terrible civil war. So um, her, her discussions of rape. And then in the United States, I live in a wonderful state of Minnesota. Uh, so many laws of child protection, and we have uh, you know, horrific cases still of of priests uh, in the Catholic Church, but it's also in other churches, too, of raping children inside the church. So these are issues that cut across centuries, even the issue of child slavery. You think, oh, slavery, we, we did away with that. But uh, we, we have to talk about slavery, sexually exploited children, and our country, people in our country participate in that. We see it across the globe. So uh, these are, it's sad to say, but it's a we might say, almost equal opportunity enterprise, all these challenges that face all countries and all centuries. And so it's also interesting that all of these issues are things that can be studied and explored in some of our very rich resources in the Bible, in the history of Christianity, in um, our theological traditions, that we can gain some wisdom from those sources, um, as well as what we're learning you know, from social scientists about the situation of children today. So mining those resources, I think, is so important and so much work to be done, just a lot of work to be done. I'm very interested in this issue of households. Thank you for mentioning that because sometimes I think, uh, you know, some churches are very good at welcoming all forms of families and households, and some are not as good. It's kind of like, oops, you don't fit this certain mold, and so it's not as welcoming. I think in our country a lot of the non-denominational churches are thriving because they do welcome all forms of families and households. And they're very attentive to the needs of children in whatever form of family, even as they highlight the positive value of marriage. So um, that's something. I, I'm a Lutheran. Martin Luther wrote a lot about parenting. Very interesting. And I think we need to talk more about what it is to be parents or caregivers, what you were saying about you know, people don't even talk about sexuality with their children, right? How can that be? How can that be? They're going to get the message. We used to have this question, will our children have faith? That's not really the question, because our children have faith in something, right? They are getting messages. They are making meaning every day. So if we're not talking to them about meaning and values and what we think, well, then they're going to get it somewhere else, whether the media or their peers one of our very good ethicists in the United States, Bob Benny, he wrote a very moving essay about what he would do differently in his own family. He uh, is a very strong Christian. He took his, his children to church, but they never talked about issues of faith or the family. They didn't pray together. They didn't do practices or have rich conversation, have faith practices in their home. Um, but he thought they would all grow up Christian because they went to church together, and he's a Christian. Uh, but what did they do at home? They talked a lot about tennis and playing tennis and sports. And it, he, he wrote this essay, What I Would Do Differently. He said, you know, we didn't talk about faith or issues, of, even money. They didn't even talk about money connected to their faith, right, or sexuality or any of these issues. But so he said, all my children, they turned out that none of them, belong to the church anymore, but all of my children play tennis. <laughs> so it just shows you, you know, what are you doing in the household? I think it's so important. And gosh, some of these theologians from the past have written so movingly about these things. Luther had 
this whole list of responsibilities like you need to help teach your children about faith in the home here's some materials here's some the catechism for you to do it you should be praying together talking together singing together um, you should uh, be talking about issues that matter to you. He also said things like, you got to help your children find a mate. That's an important task, right? We help them find a good school, a good place to play tennis. Why don't you help them talk to them about finding a mate, right? A partner, a life partner. So there's just a lot to be gained from, I think, some of these ancient sources that speak to some of our issues today. So I just did want to say there's a lot of work. I'm very happy and excited and optimistic. So much being done in all these areas. Um, we still have a lot of work to do in all of our seminaries and in all of our schools to bring it into the curriculum. So I just want to encourage you to think about how to do this well because we don't do it well yet in the United States. It's not a, it's still a sort of marginal issue, but I think these resources are helping to see, whoa, it's an, a legitimate area of intellectual inquiry. You can't talk about the church without talking about children, so we better get it in somehow. So I encourage you to be a model for other institutions, and I invite, you asked me about gems for um, young people doing research, just, just to say, follow your own questions even if other people think, oh, that's nothing, that's not an important question. Why are you talking about that? To follow your own interests and questions is so important in research. Um, at the University of Chicago, where I went, we have a Nobel Prize winner in physics. And his work on fluids and physics, and he got this Nobel Prize for it, on how fluids move, started out with a question Where's my coffee cup? But anyway, he was interested in how the coffee, you know how you get stains underneath your coffee cup and how the fluid moves from the coffee cup? And from those questions about, is it always a pattern? Is it not a pattern? How is it moving? It went from that simple question of fluid on the bottom of your coffee cup to a Nobel Prize in physics on movement of fluids. So a simple question in your, in your context, why is this happening? What about the issue of girl children in, in our schools or whatever the question is in your context, in your area of responsibility, to take those questions seriously and to follow them up with some research that is of interest to you and where your passion lies. I think that's important. And uh, I think it's also very important for all of us, whatever our denominational background or a more conservative, more liberal, whatever you terms we use, to expand our discussion about children. Often in certain churches or groups or movements, we narrow our discussion of children, right? So, for example, people for a long time thought all the Catholic Church is talking about is abortion, right? And there was a lot of discussion on abortion. Abortion is important, but there was also so much being done on social justice of issues for children in poverty, right? Children in schools and injustices in the schools. So, but if the public debate is too much on one issue, that's all we see the church is interested in. Ah, abortion. They don't have anything to say, right? Or in the mainline churches, maybe we talk more about children's rights, their value, their agency. Maybe we didn't talk enough about other things, about teaching, about child advocacy. So to just all of us expand the vocabulary within our context, within our, within our faith communities, within our academic communities, for all these concerns we have about children, not just one or two. It also, when we do that, it narrows our own perspective on our obligations to children, right? Part of the reason, like Don Browning got very interested in things like Dobson was saying about discipline teaching, but sometimes if you only talk about that, well then how narrow is your view of the child? It's so many other things, right? But we can learn from one another what people are saying about these various areas, but we can also expand. So just to expand our vision wherever we are to our commitments to children, the challenges they face, and how we can work within our faith communities to, to um, have a richer uh, conversation that honors the dignity of children as real human beings.